Hello, I'm Tim Burcham, Director of the Northeast Rice Research and Extension Center with the University of Arkansas System, Division of Agriculture. I'm joined today by Dr. Jared Harkey, Extension Rice Agronomist. Jared, welcome to the presentation today. Thank you for coming by to share with our viewers some of your observations about this year's crop and in particular some of the activities that are going on here at the Northeast Rice Research Extension Center or as we like to call it, uh, NERIC. Can you tell our group a little bit about uh, your job duties? Uh, yeah, so kind of, you know, as state rice agronomist, uh, really an in, in overview or, or kind of try to lead or I always say help facilitate production recommendations for rice in the state. And that's working with all of our other crop specialists and county agents, of course. And definitely our research center, research and extension centers located throughout the state, uh, again, to try to drive and, and help find solutions to and, and hopefully uh, sometimes even answers to questions maybe we didn't know we had for rice production and try to move our, our production efforts forward. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Hargy, this is, of course, is uh, the first time that you've had, I think you've got ARPT or Arkansas Rice Performance Trials here, commercial rice trial uh, uh, trials here, as well as a, a series of VBIN uh, studies here. What are some of the unique aspects of this particular farm that you know will help our producers here in Poinsett County with these uh, Henry Silt Loam soils. So, what whenever we look at all the data that comes from your trials here, how's that going to help our rice producers? Well, that that's been a nice transition for us to to have this opportunity at this location. We we have a we've always had a nice complement of research and extension centers around the state. Again, to do do testing in a more controlled environment. We always love to do on-farm testing as a part of it, and yeah. you know, where we're not managing every aspect of of what's going on. But but there's a certain necessity to those controlled environments, and one certainly uh, location that, that that's been missing over the years is is right here in in the Poinsett County area right. on a Henry Silt Loam that's right in the heart of, of what is now the number one rice producing area in the state. Yes, sir. And it has been for a long time. Yes, sir. but but to have this opportunity to, to get on these soils here and move forward. So when we start talking about trials like the Arkansas Rice Performance Trials, so. Uh, that's actually the most advanced yield trial coming from uh, our University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture Breeders, our rice breeding program, to look at potential releases compared to standard commercial checks. And, and that includes looking at conventional long grains, clear field long grains, uh, medium grains, clear field medium grains, uh, provisia. Right. long grains right. now as well as long grain aromatics right to add to it so we're looking at those new releases there are right now we've already harvested some sites certainly this year there's some pretty exciting stuff coming forward uh, reason to be excited really across all of those different platforms and different grain types and then to build on that to kind of at the next level beyond that you mentioned the commercial rice trial yes sir so that's really oriented toward trials that almost exclusively only have commercial offerings that a grower could actually choose to grow. Right. So that, that's a set apart study. Certainly there's some entries that overlap between like an ARPT, you've got your checks in there. Yes. And that, that exist in the in that CRT, your commercial rice crop. The goal there is a self-contained study to really look at, at what we're doing and, and what our performance is looking at both on stations and then those are also repeated on farm and grower fields to try to capture even other areas in the state that we have that it, you know that even then again a research station doesn't capture exactly those soil types or, or those environmental conditions and some of the latitudes kind of that, that we're operating in. Uh, you also mentioned the V by N or variety right. by nitrogen trial. So every time there's a new release, and that doesn't have to be one from Arkansas, that might be from Louisiana, it might be from a private company release where we're looking at our, our standard nitrogen rate recommendations for all those different varieties. And so this gives us another site, again, on another soil type that we need to be on right. working with those in a controlled environment to, to give us standard in rate. We've always got all those adjustments we make to those standards that, that we publish, but getting a, a much closer uh, starting point to where growers need to target, especially with new varieties, kind of where they need to be related to other stuff we're growing. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, it's a great program, and the breadth of this, uh, of course, uh, is a 
cooperative effort by our, our rice growers through the checkoff program as well as the division resources. Can you just talk about that partnership and, and how the checkoff dollars allow us to put trials like this in and, and help you with your research to represent the, uh, rice, uh, the entire rice growing region in Arkansas? Absolutely. I mean, everything I just described, uh, ARPT, CRT, VBAN, all, all of that is not possible without support from the Arkansas Rice Research and Promotion Board that comes directly from grower checkoff dollars. So that, that's how we're able to, to get to all these locations, this one included, uh, get them planted all the way to harvest. I mean, without that support, uh, we can't get to all these places and it never it never fails no matter how many places we are we still feel like we're never enough places <laughs> right you know, no, no matter yeah. what so uh, our goal at the end of the day is is working with all of our cooperators stations included centers such as this one yes sir. and trying to maximize what we're what we're using those research dollars for so the Absolutely. goal is for it never works out this way but for every <laughs> single site to be a success to get usable yield data that we can relate to growers to help make those production recommendations to see have them be able to see that return on that investment right. that, that we're pushing forward. Yeah. Well, Dr. Harkey, I know you've got a great team that works with you. You might share with the, with our with our viewers today just a little bit. You know, what does it take? Uh, you know, just looking at just one trial out here, it's uh, what is it? Four by twenty four is just one segment. So it's there's a lot of replication out there. Of course, a randomized block design. That's something that it takes some help to do that type of thing. Yeah, it, it takes a ton of help and, and with the amount of work that, that we do across, again, a wide range, you know, anymore we kind of, it's, it's more of a agronomy and fertility, you know, touching on everything. And again, that's just, just my programs. That's not yes. touching on all the other pest management, weeds, insects, Correct. disease, everybody else is doing breeding as well. Uh, but when you're talking about it, it, and I always joke, they look small. I mean, I even jokingly <laughs> call them postage stamps because they are relatively small plots. And we do, we call them small plot research. Yes, sir. Uh, but it's, it's very precise in the way that we conduct those trials and they're small and done that way for a reason so that we can manage them very uniformly for the area. That's another upside of keeping them relatively confined. The, the conditions they're in are more uniform. Yes. And then we, you know, all the way from, from planning that it takes multiple people to at, at once to plant the trials. We hadn't even talked about treating the seed. And exactly. All the seed. Exactly. Uh, and all the way through all the notes and measurements we take through everything all the way to harvest and getting it out. Uh, it, it takes a, I run a, a pretty big team and, uh, and they're they're just phenomenal yeah. and and again that's their efforts also directly supported by by the checkoff program and and so i mean i i can't have them and be able to achieve all this without i tell them all the time if there's nothing else my crew takes away from any day is that we can't get this stuff done without them absolutely so uh that that's just a huge part of it yeah. but yeah huge investment of time i mean you Yes, I, the, I mean, I number say, of trips we have to make right. uh, ourselves, again, to, to sites scattered around, and that's only reduced by the support we get from the centers Sure, to help minimize <laughs> and cut down on some of those trips to help yeah. us take notes and everything. So, I mean, it's it's a team effort yeah. to get it all done, not just my crew, but with the center at yeah. every location. Uh, and again, some of the on-farm locations, county agents Absolutely. help us take notes. Right. It's, uh, it's all one big... Uh, one big circle. Yeah, well, I tell you, your teams work really hard, and we really appreciate their, you know, correspondence with us. As we as we've tried to do, you know, our part as a, as the station to you know to to help the ARPT, your CRT, your VBIN, and so we really appreciate your team and appreciate the communication they've had with us going through this growing season. Another area, Dr. Harkey, I'd like to visit with you about is uh, row rice or fur irrigated rice. So we have one demonstration here. Uh, with some fur irrigated rice and it's uh, looking really good and we've had probably as you would know some some issues in the in the uh, upland portion of that with regard to a little bit different weed management practices uh, we probably had a little bit of issues with our beds uh, that we're you know learning as we go but we were able to correct that mechanically but if you would just share with us a little bit about row rice and you know what you're seeing across the state uh, some advantages and disadvantages of, of row rice because we, we see that number of acreage growing every year we do we're you know, last year we were over 15% of our acreage. That was our estimate in fur irrigated rice. Uh, this year, again, acres fluctuating, 
swapping around due to you know competing commodities stuff like that it's it's probably once again still in the 15 to, to 20 percent rise right. that we're in row rice now uh you already mentioned some of the challenges that exist but that's almost every scenario moving into trying some some row rice or corrugated rice is is that learning as you yes. go so you learn the same thing all the growers are <laughs> right learning. every field kind of presents its own challenge to shift into row rice yes uh you know do we pull the beds before do we pull water furrows after uh, after planting yes uh how just how deep a furrow do we pull how wide how tall do those beds end up being all of those little wrinkles that, that go into it uh th this is actually a great location to put in some row rice like you have here yes. in, in that field like i said still had challenges to work some to challenges it out. yes uh but but it is you know the the field you know that it's in is that more of a straight levee if it if it were in levees more yep. of a straight levee type situation so the watering is more uniform that way we're not fighting cross slopes right uh, which is kind of one of our biggest uh, tradition one of our biggest issues going to row rice we want enough of a bed or at least enough of a water furrow to consistently run water down the field but we don't want it too deep and too tall or we can't wick water to the center of the bed right. and we, we hurt yield that way so it, it's a finding that delicate balance between the two and it gets worse on contour fields that have side slopes finding where you won't start jumping beds and then you just end up with areas you don't notice until it's too late right. that you're not getting water no there. water and then it's too late to do anything right. without tearing up a bunch of rice so yeah um that that's been a, a gradual effort uh but again there's there's really not an area of the state at this point that's not seeing that any increase in row rice yes seeing where it benefits just more of folks are figuring out those elements with the equipment they have and how they like to manage their crops the fields that it works for them on right and some have found absolutely the reverse doesn't really work on this field but work great over there so right. we're not going to do it again in that <laughs> yeah. one let's you know fields that look like that one let's let's try that again yeah. and just continuing to see that expand so uh we, we've never necessarily certainly not you know really five six years ago when this really started to take off we've been doing some row rice for a long time right but super small amounts so yes. when it started taking off uh really focused on the increased ability to rotate more easily cut down on equipment passes nobody loves levees <laughs> so you know getting those out of the picture is always yeah, a positive exactly. and that helps with all of that turn right. around and, and time to build them yeah. um that's that's helped with that gradual effort so we were never pushing it as a quote water saving right. approach yeah. to, to going to row rice however as everybody's gotten more comfortable with the idea that water is a semi-aquatic plant we yeah. flood it because we can and it'll tolerate it it helps with our fertility it helps our weed control yeah so it works great but you don't have to you just you just can't let it drought stress basically right uh now that guys are starting to pull back and not over water we're easily seeing that we're not having much trouble certainly watering no more than we are with a flooded environment right and in a lot of cases showing that they can water less yeah not in all i mean again yeah, you get into exactly. all those field specific situations but there, there's a lot of advantages that are there that, it, that it's still of a, a learning as we go type approach but those are some of the big ones we we still have to be careful about what cultivars we're planting yes, out there yes of course uh we do have some variety trials scattered out in the in the state uh, looking at that, that we've continued to do that we're going to have to expand that now going forward yes. but uh, blast resistance is still a huge key with not having a flood uh, just just those varieties and hybrids have the best stress tolerance are, are clearly our standouts every time in the row rice environment so still just being mindful and, and there's some slight nuances I mean you can even pick out the the medium grain varieties stand out that that of those without getting i want to get some more data this year before right. i go too far but <laughs> you can see some differences there that some of them just are more comfortable in that environment yes. than others very clearly yeah so we'll, we'll have a little bit more guidance at the end of this year as well on making some of those other decisions with row rice so it's a, it's a fun unique system but that that's further expanded our workload because now we're repeating we don't just have the flooded version that we've always focused on right. now we're repeating that work again now in, in a non-flooded environment in the upland area yes. yeah and dr hardick i know you guys have, have continued our research teams have continued to look at the nutrient aspects of this row rice uh, probably maybe some soil moisture 
monitoring up in that uh, the, the headland area, uh, the you know the upland portion of that. Uh, how are we progressing as far as you know making the right calls on our nutrient management with uh, row rice production as well? We're the farthest along on the nitrogen part of it. Yes, sir. That that one, you know, several years of work and, and studies scattered all over the state. And and the, the the quick take home without digging in, you know, too deep into it is unlike flooded rice, where we're the goal is to put the majority of our nitrogen out pre-flood, right. put the water on, hold it. In that row rice environment, the best idea is to split it up. Yep. And there's several different splits depending on soil types and things that we, we kind of tease out and change recommendations a little from a loam to a clay. Right. But the big idea is not putting the big slug of nitrogen out and, and that being it. We, we want to break it up to, to varying degrees on those scenarios. The, the bigger kind of long-term game at this point would be phosphorus, potassium, and zinc. Yes. Uh, we've, we've, the, the unfortunate part of that is we really needed to spend time documenting what was going on. Right. And so we spent a few years actually sampling and documenting what are the differences between the flooded environment and that upland, right. you know, the top end of the field environment in terms of uptake of those nutrients. There's clearly a significant difference in there and going forward is gonna be looking at potential right. changes to our fertility recommendations for rice for PK and zinc uh, in, in that row rice environment compared to flood that it looks like you know we may have to push those rates a little harder right. uh, that, that we really haven't had to. You get into a flooded environment and you get increased availability of course in those in those situations as, as pH tends to increase and things so that's that's going to be a shift going forward. We always like we're like everybody else we wish we had the answer yesterday <laughs> uh, for, for every problem that comes up right. but we had to uh, we we didn't want to put the cart before the horse the right. the horse was what's going on right you know, what do we need to focus on is it all the nutrients is it one and, and originally the focus was more uh phosphorus right just knowing how phosphorus behaves in a in a non-flooded versus flooded environment right. but we quickly found out eh, the others are getting pulled along for the ride as exactly. well so yeah uh, that, that's the next step, like I said, going forward is figuring out how to adjust or potentially adjust our recommendations in rice to account for that. Yeah. And that may help to explain some of the yield drags we see at times in some row rice fields that otherwise look outstanding. Right. right. See a little bit of deficiency show up that soil tests say it should be in great shape and clearly there's something going on. So we're going to have to have to adjust some things. Well, I know that baseline information that you're talking about is just critical. And for our rice growers, getting that foundation on those nutrient, uh, you know, for our row rice production is critical. So I appreciate your team working so hard and our research team with the division looking and trying to get that baseline so that we can provide our, our you know, our growers with the best information. Can't do that without Dr. Trent Roberts. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> well, Dr. Hardke, you travel throughout the state you uh, talk with our producers or rice producers throughout the state so you know as we close out today's conversation what what are you hearing about this year's crop or what are some things that are surprises and if you would just give us a little comment about what you're seeing throughout the state well it was 2021 was certainly just uh we'll chalk it up to another battle yes sir uh it seems like everyone is now we're always looking for we, we've been talking about for for years for a decade you know what's what's normal you know, uh, Bob Scott, now our extension director, uh, was always uh, always fond of telling me, "Hey, you let me know when we have a normal year," because <laughs> they just just don't, don't show happen. Up. Uh, the only odd thing, I guess, I could say for 2021 is we've actually now had three consecutive very similar years. I wouldn't say that these are normal years, but, right. but very similar, which is strange for us over right. the past 10, 15 years. Uh, every year is usually a complete change in, in some way. Uh, but certainly, you know, we've fought army worms this year yes. to, yeah. to record levels and not record levels of stink bugs, but difficulty controlling them. And right. certainly the flooding events that happened earlier in the year. Yes. Uh, we, we had a hurricane uh, near miss, I call it a near it was, hit, uh, <laughs> near miss, but, uh, that really, you know, that one had its own impact. that wasn't directly weather related because of what, unfortunately it did to new Orleans. Yes. Sir. And, and certainly we have our, our concern just about the folks in South Louisiana and their, and their impact uh, on them. And, and hopefully they're, they're able to recover, but 
the impact on the Port of New Orleans and what it has done to to basis levels for yes. our commodity prices, not yeah. just rice, but for everything. That's that was that indirect impact when we say, hey, we got away with not much rain, not much wind. We thought it was going to be pretty devastating. We still got a hit. It's just not one that shows standing in the field, right. you know, going right. on there. Yeah. So, uh, really, where we're at at this point, another mild growing season we were planted later than we prefer it wasn't right. as late as we've seen in the past couple of years but but still trending later uh but mostly a mild season until we got well into june finally started to dry up turned a lot warmer very hot and humid at one point temperatures weren't too high but the humidity was was pretty exhausting uh but but really optimal growing conditions for rice and that's really showing out with what we know about rice yields so far hearing right. a lot of exceptional yields out that's there wonderful. from a lot of growers uh very much needed we've been very fortunate the past several years we've been just right under our state average record right for several years in a yeah. row i don't see any reason to think that we won't be right in that neighborhood again you know right right in that ball so 166 so. point 67 right yeah. 168 is the record yes, you know, yeah but we've been 166 167 for about four straight years yes, so you know things just hold on with the later planted rice right, yeah right. i'm not predicting anything but it's <laughs> not even possible when you're touching that close yes sir. Doing well so yeah happy to see that the the downside would be uh, lower milling yields last year was an exceptional year for milling yields yes sir uh which makes it even a little harder to, to handle this year so uh, being a little below average and certainly there are some fortunately some very low milling yields out there uh, those seem to be pretty limited. Most yeah. are just, well, just, just below average. Right. Uh, there certainly, there's always a bright spot here and there, but but below average. But again, that's a little harder to handle when you had great milling last year, and so you you're not. It's not a little bit of adjustment down from an average year. It's 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 just a little harder swing. Yeah. Uh, with having an exceptional milling year last year, so uh, that's one that hopefully the the high yields will help to offset any of the lower milling yields uh, and hopefully of course we talked about i mentioned stink bugs yes a while ago uh, we are seeing more more pecky rice this year than we saw last year yeah. last year was very low stink bug right, year right. and then this year is trying to make up for it yeah. is really what it comes down to and uh that that's leveled off so i think we're okay and and quality's in in pretty good shape now that we're you know making our way through here but very exciting on the yield front and, and hope it holds out well i know another area that that I hear from our, our local producers here is just the supply chain issues. Uh, you know, in the background there, our shop, uh, we're continuing to make progress on the shop for the station here, but we've had some supply tra uh, supply chain issues there. Uh, you know, what are you hearing from our producers with regard to everything from machinery, uh, fertilized costs? It's just, uh, it seems like that that's been another stressor for this year's crop uh, is being able to get the parts that we need for the machinery that we have and those kinds of things. So, uh, am I alone in the, in the feeling no, that struggle this no, year? Not not at all. And unfortunately, it's it's setting up to be a, a struggle going into next year. Yes, sir. Uh, not only the, as you mentioned the machinery and parts, but there there's definitely growing concern right now, and it's being reflected in in prices, but of our inputs yes, going sir. forward from. Yes, sir. Still equipment, everything in parts for it, but uh, our fertilizers, our, our chemicals that we need, yeah. uh, we're, we're pretty concerned going to next year about the supply chain and, and having everything we need, again, at a reasonable price right. as well to, to try yeah. to produce a good crop and an and economical one at that. So, no, there, there's a lot of concern that's just increasing that, it, that it's not going to get better anytime soon. We let one upside. Now, if you're still waiting on a part for a combine or something right now, your concern is immediate. It's but, immediate, yeah. But outside of that, we, you know, we do still have time to get into next year, you know, six months from now before we're going to see rice in the ground uh, to for things to straighten out a little bit, we certainly right. hope. But yes. uh, until we see it happen, there there's going to be that concern all the way up up to the last minute. And it's, it's probably still going to be a hit and be an economic impact on our growers. Even if they return... To more reasonable levels, they're still pretty elevated at this point. Right. So we're already working on our, our economics folks are already working on trying to get our usual crop production enterprise budgets out right. even earlier this year, reflecting those increased costs in inputs right. to help growers make very early. Now we're, we're 
we're harvesting, but it's always time to make seed selection decisions as well and start placing orders for next year. Absolutely. Try to go ahead and get ahead and, and know what your crop selection should be based on those economics. So we're, our, our folks are trying to work on that part as well. Absolutely. And I know uh, Scott Stiles, Brianna Watkins, our team that with the division that works on our budgets, those are so critical to us. And I know they're working really hard right now to get those updated with the, you know, the newest pricing that, that our producers are going to yes. be looking at and, going forward. Remember, those are a guide. We do the best <laughs> It's a guide. Them, but they are generalized. <laughs> yes. But the input costs are the best thing. Then it just those right. budgets for your operation. Absolutely. What you're, what you're actually using for inputs. But yeah, you, those are a great springboard to help make, make Absolutely. decisions. Well, Dr. Hardke, thank you so much for coming by today. I know we're getting ready. Uh, you're looking at the, your plots today, getting ready for harvest maybe next week. We've got some good weather that we're looking forward. Uh, rain passed through, really didn't get that much rain here. So we're looking at a great opportunity, a good window for harvest going forward. So I want to thank you for coming by and sharing with our viewers today for this inaugural uh, virtual field tour for our station here. I also want to thank our rice producers, the Rice Checkoff Program, Arkansas Rice uh, research and promotion board and just uh, the administration uh, at the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture for their support and uh, that lets us do uh, what we do to help our growers uh, have the best crop. So again, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us today. Yep, thanks for having me and don't forget to have a rice day.